So hello again. Now we're going to use all the concepts we've learned and actually use it for an example that we can see all the way through. So for this example, I'm doing this something very similar to my Mealy versus More machine video. I'm going to try to create a sequence detector just like that video, but with a different sequence. And this time, we'll actually be able to create the circuit from start to finish. So let's start with creating the state diagram. For this problem, it specifically asks for a Mealy system. This means that the output will not be tied to the state, which will result in a different variable that will represent the output of the system. So for the state diagram, we know that we will have as many states as the number of bits in our sequence. I go over this in a previous video, so you can review it if you need to. So here I've drawn the th four states that we will have, starting with zero. I've labeled them in bi binary so that we have something to put into our D flip-flops. These values will be stored in the flip-flops as in will represent when the system is in that state. Since this is a mealing machine, these are not synonymous of the output. The output will be something different, which we will determine with the arrows when it transfers from one state to the next. Therefore, we see that the, in a mealy system, the output will not only depend on the state, but also what state transition, the state transition. So now let's start with the sequence. We know it will advance when it receives a one in state zero, and the output will be zero because we only want to show a one as an output when the sequence is detected. It goes from 1 to 2 with a 1, and again 0, and I'll just do the last one. Then finally, we're in state 3. If it receives a 1, it will go back to state 1, since we can also consider that 1 as a part of a new sequence. And it will have a 1 is an output because we have reached the sequence. So now that we have what we want to happen, we're going to go over and fill out the rest of the numbers and possibilities. For example, in state 3, if we get a 0, we're going to go back to state 0 and display a 0. So let me just draw for state 1 and state 2. If they, if in state 1 it has a 0, it must go back to state 0. If in state 2 it has a 1, it can start counting that as a new sequence and goes to state 1. And in state 0, finally, if it has a 0, it stays in state 0. Okay, and this is our state diagram. So I have minimized the state diagram so that we have room left for our truth table. Now that we've visualized what we want the system to do, we are going to have to translate this into a truth table, which we can then use KMAPs for. In order to do this, we're going to lay the bits for our states A and B, and the input will be labeled X. And what we want to find is the next state, so A plus and B plus, and the output, which we will call Y. We want to cover all the possibilities, all the possible combinations of A, B, and X. So in order to do so, we are going to count in binary, just like we're used to, and put 0, 0, 0. And then again, you can remember my trick to do this one changes every single line. B will change every two lines. And A will change every four lines. Now for the next part, we will look at our state diagram and see what happens after each of these combinations. 
So for a plus, when we are in state zero, so let me just show that right here, we're looking at this line. In state zero, if x is zero, we will stay in state zero. So we can put a and b at the same time because we know what state it is. And that state is characterized by two bits. Now if there is a one, we advance to state one. So now we've moved to state one. Once in state one, if we get a zero, we move back to state zero. But if we get a one, we go to state two. Now that we're in state two, if we get a one, we'll go back to state one. Otherwise, we will go to state three. And finally, in state three, if we get a zero, we will go back to state zero. However, if we get a one, we'll go back to state one, and the output will be different. So I left the output y for the last, because we only have one, one output for the y. So we can just put that in and add the rest of the zeros. So from the state diagram, we see that this one only occurs when you are in state three. So that only occurs here and you have a one output. So just this line right here. That is going to be our only one for the y output. So now we have our truth table for this system. Our next step will be to determine what kind of flip-flop we will be using for the memory. For this example, I will be using D flip-flops just because they're the easiest to visualize. What will be stored in our flip-flops will be the states, not the output. So the D flip-flops will be representing these two variables, A plus and B plus. In order to know what will be entering each D flip-flop, we need to create a K map for each of them. Let's look at the D flip-flop for A. We will build our K-map with A, B, and X. Remember that when we count in binary for a K-map, we always have to count in gray code. So here we have our K-map for the first D flip-flop that will represent the A variable. We will try to group these two ones, but it is not possible since they are not adjacent to each other. So they will be two isolated ones. From this, we see the expression for DA is going to be, remember that we read where the ones are, and we consider zeros as nots and ones as variables if we're doing sum of products. So we have a naught bx or a b naught x. With some Boolean algebra, we can say that dA is equal to x factored out from a naught b or a b naught, which is the same as saying x a x or b. So if you review my videos, I mentioned how the x or gate is difficult to see in a k map, so you're always going to have to end up doing some Boolean algebra to simplify your circuit if there is an x or relationship. Now, we will look over to the B variable. We'll construct the K-map the same way as before. Remember that a good way to verify if you are doing this correctly is to count the number of ones in the truth table and in the K-map and see if they match. In this case, they are both four ones, so it works out. Next, we are going to group the ones Remember, we are trying to minimize the number of groups while maximizing the number of ones that are covered in each group. 
From these groups, we see that dB is equal to a naught v naught x is equal to b naught x or a x or a b naught. So now we have the expression for our second flip-flop. Something that I forgot to do was write the plus for the B and A just to make sure that it is easy to understand that we are actually looking for the function for the next instant of these variables. So I added the plus signs to our final formulas. Now the only function we are missing is the output, y. Now, while we can make a k-map for y, we can see that there is already only one one, so we know that we won't be able to group it with anything else. So the term for the y function will very simply just be this row in terms of a, b, and x. So we know that y equals a, b, x. So now that we have all of the expressions for our flip-flops, we can begin to create the circuit. So I have prepared the base for our circuit design. Because we only need to store the state that the system is in, and we only have three, well, four states, we only need two bits, which means that we only need two D flip-flops. I have included our variables A, B, and X, and you need to remember that we will later connect the DA plus to A and DB plus to B for the system to work properly. Now that we have our outline, we're going to start designing the logic gates that will connect the inputs with the D flip-flops. For DA, we have an OR and an XOR gate. Closest to the DA, we have an OR gate. Then we have the XOR. And our inputs will be X and an XOR gate. Our inputs will be X, and to the XOR gate we will have B and A. Now for DB, we will have three terms connected by an OR gate. For these terms, we have B naught X, we have AX, and finally AB naught. So that is what is going to go into the D flip-flops. And as a very important step, we cannot forget to connect the outputs of the flip-flops back into the inputs. Now we have everything except for our y. Our y function will simply be, let's write y over here, just so that it's the other side is not so crowded, will only be an AND gate of a, b, and x. And that is our circuit. As you can see, the output depends only on the states and the input. And that's the reason why it's not connected to a memory on its own, because we don't need to store the value of the output. So that's a full example of how to create a system for a state machine. I hope this was helpful.